Well, there you have it, I guess. It's going to be on and popping like Orville Redenbacher in the hardcore wrestling world, isn't it? Isn't it? NXT versus AEW. Oh, neckbeards explode. <laughs> Welcome to the Wednesday Night Wrestling Wars. Huh. Guess we have these cycles where every few years or a decade or so we go through this. Well, we last went through it really with TNA in the early part of this decade. Uh, so I guess we're at the end of the decade. Let's give it a shot. Now what's this going to mean for WWE? More specifically, what's it going to mean for NXT? What's it going to mean for All Elite Wrestling? Let's look at the... WWE component of this first. This is totally a dick move. Not only is WWE trying to undercut All Elite Wrestling before it gets off the ground running with their own primetime television on Turner on TNT starting October 2nd, they are trying to really undercut it by not only running head-to-head, -head, but starting this stuff on September 18th. They're trying to get a two-week head start on it. Vince is basically trying to nip any type of potential competition in the marketplace in the bud before it has a chance to flower and grow. And if any of us were in Vince McMahon's position, we would do the exact same thing. While it is totally a dickhole move, while it is totally ridiculous with all the issues that he has in terms of Raw and SmackDown and their declining viewership, to now want to spread himself even thinner by introducing another potentially live two-hour wrestling program on a third consecutive night. You got Monday night three hours, Tuesday night two hours, and Wednesday night another two hours. To hell with the wrestling audience. Let's burn them out. Let's have them flame up to the damn ground. We would all do the same thing that Vince is doing. It is not about being scared. It is not about being anything other than the sheer fact of trying to eliminate any potential competition, even if it ever became any real competition, before it gets off the ground to get started. It's Vince, if anything, learning from the mistake of not trying to more aggressively go after UFC back in its formative days to where UFC was able to get enough of a stranglehold, enough of a foothold, where WWE didn't respond, and even if they wanted to respond, it was way, way too late to do so, and the damage was done, and it's irreversible. This totally makes sense. And let's keep perspective on this. If Vince was really, truly scared 100% by AEW, he wouldn't be throwing up his freaking minor league developmental group head up against him. That's what he thinks of all elite wrestling. That's what he thinks about Cody and the Bucks and Omega and Jericho and those guys and JR running the show. He's so confident in his own bullshit, foolishly or not, that he's going to throw up his third rate show by comparison in terms of audience size and exposure and fan base up against a company's only television show. Like, that's what we're dealing with here. This is sounding like a Vince McMahon puff piece, and I'm not ex designing it to be. It's just reality. It's just the business world. We must keep proper perspective here. This is really a no-lose situation for him in all win. He's going to naturally take audience away from all elite wrestling. In worst case scenario, he's going to mitigate the damage when that brand is trying to get off the ground by having his show going head-to-head. -head. People are going to be flipping back and forth. He also has a much, much more established and well-ironed out infrastructure that is going to appeal a lot more to advertisers than in all elite wrestling is. That, that's just a fact. You're talking about Vince and all the corporate power and corporate structure within WWE and the licensing and the merchandising and all of this. They have all these built-up relationships that AEW does not advertisers are going to naturally gravitate to that. If Vince throws NXT out there and it fails and also AEW's show ultimately fails, then it's a huge success for Vince. He can put NXT right back on the WWE network and he's no worse for the wear. In the meantime, for trying this out, he's going to get reportedly up to $50 million a year for the rights to air NXT for two hours every Wednesday night on USA Network. 
Like if you're in his spot, you're absolutely going to do this. They're giving me more money to bring this show up. If it doesn't work, I can put it back on the network where it's a staple of what we do there. And all the while potentially nipping any real competition in the bud before it's had a chance to sprout and grow. There is no lose here. This makes total and complete sense. It is a cock block move. It is a jerk hole move. It is what happens with the people in power that have the money, that have that political positioning, if you will, to sit there and try to block progress, try to block new threats out on the horizon, to try and keep a monopoly over what they do. And no matter what anybody says in terms of all the different independent companies, you got a New Japan and all this, all that, when it comes to North American professional wrestling, WWE is a monopoly, period. Period, 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 exclamation point. They are a monopoly. So monopolies are going to do what monopolies are going to do. They're going to try and rig the game in their favor. They're going to use their resources, in this case, you know, very deep resources, their revenue streams, to try and block somebody else from taking their market share. This is a direct threat in some ways, a direct attack. Even if they're trying to backdoor by not going head to head Wednesday night, Vince is going to say, you know what? You want to play? Oh, buddy, we are going to play. So you look at this from WWE standpoint, nothing to lose, everything to gain. And even if they don't gain anything, they could still potentially win. As far as NXT, you're going to naturally have to change the presentation and the branding of it. You're probably going to see some of the people that aren't used much on Raw or SmackDown be brought back down to NXT, if you will. If not, it's going to be in this really weird place where you're going to have three straight nights of a wrestling show put out by WWE. That is a lot. It's too much. We all know this. But it's a lot. And as a result, you either A, put out NXT by choice as a second-rate product, saying this is our developmental territory and this is where our future is. These guys have to put their here and now up against us and kind of strategically trying to undercut all elite wrestling that way. Or you potentially dilute your two bigger shows, your two more important shows, even more by bringing some of those lesser used talents or maybe even a couple of notable names on NXT. And then you really run into the problem of you truly dilute your marketplace and oversaturate yourself with three wrestling shows that you can't really distinguish from one another. And that could potentially be disastrous, not just for NXT on primetime cable television, but also for SmackDown on Fox and Raw continuing to be on USA. How do you differentiate? What's the difference? You already have two shows that in a lot of ways feel very similar. It's not going to help matters if you've got a third that does. So you have to sit there and find ways for NXT to keep some of its current identity while helping it to branch out and grow because you cannot keep it the way it currently is and expect that to be a long-term successful venture. You just can't on network television, cable television, excuse me. As far as what this means for all elite wrestling, you know, it's one of those things that it's hard, but you got to focus on what you do. You got to hit the ground. You got to hit the ground running. You got to hit the ground strong. You got to execute well from day number one. This might limit your ability to make mistakes. This might limit your ability to kind of try new things, but you might have to be adventurous because you've got some money behind you with the Khan family, Tony Khan and so forth. So you have some resources, you have capital to play with, play with it. You have a major network, cable network in its own right in TNT supporting you and behind you. You know, you've got a good platform. You've got some guys with some name recognition, like a JR, like a Chris Jericho, like a John Moxley, at least face recognition as Dean Ambrose, you know, that could help you. You've got guys that help you maintain your loyal hardcore fan base, such as the Bucks and Omega and Cody and so forth. Uh, but when you look at this from all elite wrestling, NXT going head to head against them doesn't have to be the death knell for them by any stretch of the imagination. It does not have to be a disaster. It does not have to be, oh my God, we throw up our hands and everything else. You just got to focus on executing and doing well, which includes, among other things, focusing on those guys that you want to build up and building them up. That includes not just sitting there and appealing solely to your hardcore fan base that is going to follow you no matter what and thinking that is good enough at the big show, so to speak, because that ain't going to happen. Ah -ah! 
I go, we go way, way back in the day. ECW on TNN did a little over a million viewers, and their product was infinitely more interesting with more recognizable people at a time that wrestling was as hot as it ever has been and ever will be. And they eventually paid a bit of a price because they did not branch out from their territorial kind of mindset and their product and presentation. They didn't change to become more cable TV friendly, and it hurt them. If all elite wrestling wants to sit there and do this new Japan ROH crap and think that that's going to be the key to success, they've got another thing coming. You've got to figure out a way to appeal to the masses. You've got to figure out a way to get new wrestling fans. You cannot sit there and rely upon the hardcores that are there now because newsflash for you, a lot of the hardcores won't be there forever either. There are millions of people that used to watch wrestling that no longer do, and many, many of them back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, were hardcore fans, and they no longer watch. People evolve, people change, their tastes get different, and they grow tired or outgrow professional wrestling in its form. So you have to figure out ways to branch out in terms of the guys that are kind of calling a lot of the shots, the Bucks and Cody and so forth. You cannot sit there and be too dependent upon yourself and let that get in the way of the greater good. It doesn't mean you lose every damn match that you're in or you always make yourself look bad, but you cannot be of this mindset where we're all elite. We are the elite and we're going to put each other over and we're going to do all this shit. We always got to look good and we always got to be featured prominently. If your audience doesn't demand it and the current flow doesn't demand it, then you don't do it. And if that means you got to lose to people that you think are lesser than you, but they will matter more in the grander scheme of things, then that's exactly what the hell you do because it's good for business. As far as all elite wrestling goes, you know, this is not the best news because it has the potential to divide away audience, sure. But you got to focus on yourself first and foremost. That is the key. When you start looking over here at the big shiny of NXT and you start looking over here at WWE and you pay them too much attention, that's when you take your eye off the ball and that's when you get in trouble. Learn from the lessons of WCW in the late 90s. They were kicking WWF's ass, at least from a rating standpoint, when they started getting too consumed with WWF and trying to take WWF's top talent all away and focusing their thing on attacking Vince and crapping on that company. WWF was minding their own business in some ways, even with some of the dumb crap they did with like the Huckster and so forth. Eventually, they figured it out. They built themselves a new generation in a new way, and WCW was left out in the cold. Can't sit there and have these petty attacks and these subtle, sharp-hitting blows at fucking NXT or WWE when the people that are going to watch you anyways are going to be the only ones that care about that and it's not going to move the needle for you. Figure out ways to say, here's how we are different. Figure out ways to say, we have something for everybody. We have these guys that can do this. We have these guys that look like that. We have these guys that say this. If TNT gives you the luxury and the leeway to get a little more graphic and gory, then that's what you do. But what's really called for is making sure that you have better characters, making sure that you have better stories. And when I look at that and look at the people involved with All Elite Wrestling, I'm terrified that they won't have the ability to do that. Because what the hell makes you think that they would based off of their history and based off of what's worked? It's so easy now in wrestling to just crash test dummy your ass through a match to try and get yourself over because you were too fucking lazy or stupid to actually learn how to really get over in a way that's meaningful and connecting to fans. This does not have to be bad news for all elite wrestling. It can be, but it can be potentially really good news because you can use that as motivation and you could use that as a guide to say, here's what we're going to do and here's what we're going to be about and here's not what we're going to do and here's not what we're going to be about. I can say this from a fan standpoint, Wednesday nights just got a whole lot more interesting because now you're going to have two wrestling shows going up head-to-head -head against each other. It gives us something to talk about, at least for the time being, on a night where there's no football. So on a night we don't have any football, not a whole lot else going on, why the hell not sit here arguing, bitch, and moan about wrestling for two hours? Hell yeah!